Hey, welcome back. It's a terrific Tuesday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. We're just about halfway through the show. And uh, if you know anything about football, you know the second half is where the champions come to play. And uh, Dow Jones holding his gains from the morning. Uh, Bitcoin's still down 300. But I don't waste any of your time with that because we have a champion with us now. We have Rich Valdez joining us. Rich is uh, he's the host of the This Is America podcast. He was an aide to uh, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and is seriously considering a run against Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And, of course, uh, my managing editor sits there to keep me in line. Frank Morano joins us again. Rich, thanks for joining us again today. You bet, my brother. And uh, there's all this uproar about uh, this money that apparently went missing, all this aid money for Puerto Rico after the storms, and the mayor of Puerto Rico was going crazy that Trump wasn't doing the right thing. And lo and behold, we find out that maybe there was some uh, corruption that some money disappeared, and uh, now presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard is taking aim at, uh, at the governor there. Here's what she said. All right, maybe Tulsi Gabbard didn't say that. But um, Tulsi Gabbard is calling for the uh, removal, resignation, and uh, Rich, you're a proud uh, Puerto Rican. Yes, sir. And uh, you're born right here in Brooklyn, USA, but that's a territory of Puerto Rico, <laughs> I would say. Brooklyn. Yeah. What do you think about what's happening here? What should happen? So, I mean, I think the story starts, this is about, first of all, I think statehood being good for the United States and good for the island, number one. Secession doesn't help us in any way. The, the second thing I think we should really look at is we're looking for accountability, not anarchy. And that's the direction that we're headed in. So. There are rules for impeachment, and they should be pers uh, pursued with this governor. But we should keep in mind he hasn't been um, charged with anything. There have been multiple people arrested for uh, corruption. So I'm not, I'm not a special pleader for him. Uh, I'm not a fan. He is a Democrat. Uh, but he and I, I think, do agree that this island should opt for statehood. So I think that's number one. Number two is that this all boils down to debt that's been looming for quite a while since the Obama days. And President Obama appointed uh, the acronym PROMESA, and that stands for the Puerto Rico Oversight Management and Economic Stability Act. And their job was to help be a fiscal monitor to help restructure this debt, which has been going on forever, and obviously to help renew their state-run electrical infrastructure. Now, and this uh, governor of Puerto Rico, Ricky, uh, strikes me as uh, anything but the model public servant. But there's one aspect they of... They call their governors by the first name down Yes, there, they Ricky? call him Ricky, right? Governor Ricky. Well, I think they started calling him Ricky now as a result of him saying some things that weren't uh, savory about Ricky Martin. Well, so let me ask you, right? So um, ah. I, all these protests seem to have exploded right around the time these leaked text messages and emails uh, showing the homophobic stuff, calling, uh, mocking Ricky Martin, mocking Melissa Mark Viverito. I mean, heaven forbid they should ever see the text I've sent about Melissa Mark Viverito. I'd be in real trouble. But I have a little bit of a problem oh with goodness. private communications leading to a public official's downfall. I mean, does that bother you at all? Yeah, well, it's, I don't, wouldn't say that it bothers me, but I think that, again, bringing it back to Obama, and I'm not trying to play guilt by association, but the reality is you have uh, Obama's chief of staff famously saying, never let a good crisis go to waste. And that's what's happening here. The issue with the debt has been looming forever. There's been malfeasance for quite a while, and the signs and the flags where were they, right? The issue is now that he says a few things uh, that were insulting and incendiary to, to some people in different groups. And now, hey, we might as well have this protest and go for it. It's very political. And why have the protests exploded, not just in Puerto Rico, but here in New York and elsewhere? It seems like almost overnight, this became huge. It became the Puerto Rican spring. Well, I think the left is famously <laughs> excellent at organizing, right? They, they wrote the book Rules for Radicals, and they perpetuate it till this day. So, yeah, he says, you know, Ricky Martin, something unsavory about him being homosexual, something about Melissa Mark Veverito. Next thing you know, boom, we've got thousands and thousands of people in the streets uh, because that's how they harness things. It's very similar to uh, AOC. She says we have to fight for the working people. We have to fight for the little guy. And then she goes and votes against beds and she votes against toothpaste for people in detention centers. When I hear um, Melissa Mark Viverito's name, 
and makes me want to have a drink Salud. because she gives me the shakes. <laughs> Honestly, she um, forced, you know, a uh, FALN terrorist down New York City's throat in the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Um, she's done all kinds of things that are like totally socialist, propagandist. I, I mean, I think she's one of the worst people. And I think it might be good if she moved back to Puerto Rico and um, ran for governor. Not that I'd like to see a win, but I'd like to see her, you know, in a different territory. Well, my and I'm not saying go back to where you came from. I'm just saying there may be a crisis that needs a new corrupt politician. The last thing that Puerto Rico needs is Melissa Mark Viverito. Uh, no, my last question for you has to do with your advocacy for, for statehood. And I, I can understand the benefits of statehood. But uh, by having Puerto Rican uh, elected officials in, in both the House of Representatives and the United States Senate, there's a substantial, as you know, Spanish-speaking population population in uh, Puerto Rico, and do we basically turn Congress into the UN, uh, where we have people w speaking bilingually with interpreters and this and that? Aren't we better off with one language than admitting a primarily Spanish-speaking territory into the Congress and into the Union as a state? So this morning or yesterday, um, Governor Rosselló was on with uh, Shepard Smith, and the interview is entirely in English. Most government uh, literature in Puerto Rico is in English. All the school textbooks are in English. So I, I don't think that would be an issue. Um, right now we have the resident commissioner who serves in Congress and caucuses in Congress and is done entirely in English. But has no um, voting power. And that's the real issue of why I think we need statehood. Because if we talk about equality and people paying their fair share, Puerto Rico can now pay into the federal tax system uh, instead of it being a one-way street. Uh, but at D.C., same deal? You give them statehood as well? Uh, I say let them have a referendum. Puerto Rico's had half a dozen referendums, and it's the same result. 90 Everybody wants percent. to be part of the U.S. They want to become a state. Well, they right. don't, right? No, they, they do. No, they do. Of course yeah. they do. Who wouldn't? Everybody wants to be part of New York, uh, of U.S. We're winning. The, the, uh, the majority the Trump of the people winning. have voted. I think it was 97% want statehood. This is amazing, and it's always amazing when you have Rich Valdez in your Rolodex to call him up and get on-the-spot reporting on what's happening down in Puerto Rico, his home country, his nation of origin, and uh, it's always great when you're right there. Stay tuned for these commercials. Back after this.